I grew up in Orem, Utah. Um, I started doing shows when I was eight. I did a lot of community theater. I did stuff at the Hale, at the Sierra, all growing up. And then I started dancing at 15. Were you ever bullied? Was or I was bullied? It just internal? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I actually, um, <coughs> in junior high school, um, I, uh, I was doing a uh, play called Children of the Universe. Okay. I was the lead. Of course. And um, the costume for Children of the Universe, because it was a space-age children's musical, was a mint green lycra unitard with a sweetheart neck. <laughs> and we performed it at Canyon View Junior High School. And one day, when we were in tech, um, during a class change, um, a bunch of boys from the school grabbed me while I was in my unitard and dragged me by my ankles through the hallways. Oh my god. And uh, my locker got vandalized a lot, and it got to the point where I had to be escorted from class to class by oh, a teacher. Yeah. Kids were constantly trying to beat me up, and oh yeah, it was bad. So I actually had to transfer schools. I transferred junior high schools um, to a, to a school that had a drama program, which was which was very helpful. Um, oh, it was really bad, and I and I did become I did become suicidal, very much so at one point. And I um, I remember one night in particular that uh, that I I it just got so dark, and I anybody who's listening to this who's who's been through that or has that that thing that's eating them alive. It gets to the point where you can't control your thoughts anymore and you can't really sweep away the darkness. You don't have bright moments. Your brain's not trained to anymore. Um, and I was, <coughs> I was gonna do it. I had to go to the psychiatrist and of course lied to the psychiatrist about everything and didn't tell them the truth. And uh, I went on Zoloft for about a year. Which saved my life, completely saved my life. <clears throat> and that's when, then when I got, I was, I was a completely different human being by the time I got to New York. Because I got here and, and I think that's why I just kind of got off the plane and started skipping down the Ellerman Road. Yeah, but it was really bad. I think it's like, uh, and the thing is like Mormons who are around you, I've, I've found, or not just Mormons, but people who are old school, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, they'll, <clears throat> they'll see somebody who's struggling or they'll think you're suicidal and they'll think it's because you're gay. Right. Right. Yep. <clears throat> and that's, that's they what don't they... don't think it's because of... The way you're being treated. The way you're and being the treated way, or the what you're being told you're, about yeah. yourself. Uh-huh. Absolutely. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I remember my mother when I was... when it got really bad. She just didn't get it. Um, I remember her, her coming in into my bedroom and, and I would just be sobbing. I would sob every day after school. Every single day I would come home and just weep. Um, and she'd be like, what is so wrong? What are you crying about? And I always kind of really wanted to be able to have an open communication about it, but the, that wall was so, was so, was so strong. <clears throat> and they, I, they didn't, if, if they had anything, they did not want to know. Uh, I moved here right out of high school. That's uh, crazy. I actually dropped out of my senior year of high school because I had had it. And I worked at a welding company that my oh that my, my that my friend's dad owned. I moved out of my house and moved in with my friend, who was the first boy that I ever kind of loved. Sure. Well, of course, you know, I had all the the deep, scary thoughts and the crying to the picture of Jesus in Gethsemane thing. And before I left Utah, weirdly enough, my dance studio owner um, pulled one of my dance teachers aside because she was having suspicions about me and that boy. And she turned me into the stake president. And so I had to go in and talk to the stake president. And I came in there guns blazing. I was like, I want you to know. I know why I'm here. I know who sent me here. And I want you to know, I think it stinks. But I remember I got um, a certified letter from, I, I guess it was from that stake president. Uh, it was a certified letter telling me that my gender had been determined before birth and what? all of this stuff and <laughs> that my case, he had been released to stake president and that my case was being turned over to a new guy. My case. And I saw red. And that's kind of where I went through a time where I got really very dark about the church. For a long time, actually. I was mad. 
never thought it was a girl. Right. Never thought it was a girl. That wasn't what it was about at all. Um, your gender. <laughs> your gender was predetermined before birth. I don't think I'm a girl. My brother, when he got, I kind of got to a point after that whole thing with the letter where I wasn't talking to my family very much anymore because anything I would say to them was a lie. And so I didn't see the point in having a conversation about have you met a nice girl and how's church and all this stuff that right. wasn't true. Um, so my mom was kind of freaking out. So my brother came back from his mission and was totally on this guns blazing, bring the family together, church post-mission kick. And so he called me and asked me if he could come stay with me and visit in New York City, right off his mission. I was like, okay, uh, well, all right, if you're gonna come stay with me, you need to know a couple things. I live with a black person. <laughs> I live with a Jew. I live with a lesbian. And he said, oh, okay, so what? So there'll be a couple of beers in the fridge. And I said, damn it. <laughs> okay. So I said, and I'm gay. You knew that, right? And he said he had no idea. <laughs> he said, oh, you are, are you? So we came out. We had a whole, we duped it out, had the whole discussion, got the whole, the whole uh, uh, doctrinal thing about it. Had a huge knockdown drag out at Carmine's on 44th Street. Uh-uh. Delicious. <laughs> um, and, uh, and during that conversation, my brother told me that, that he would never tell my mother and father. Okay. Four days after my brother got back to Utah, I got a call from one sister who had gotten a call from another sister who had gotten a call from mom saying that Chris had told, had told my mother. So thus began the waiting game of now knowing that mom knows. And, uh, and I, she called me, I think it was another four days after that. And you better believe she was on a plane the next week. <laughs> she and my father were on a plane the very next week. And she, she bought a book that was written by some Mormon mother who had a gay son. And we sat in the Doubletree Hotel. And I was doing Aid at the time. And um, she had highlighted passages from this book. And she was asking me questions. And of course you cry. Right, right, right. The second you have to talk to mom about it, you cry. It's so emotional. <clears throat> it's so emotional. Uh, <coughs> but she came through like a champ. She now she now she will say, uh, in hindsight, that she that she must have known. Um, I mean, my first CD was a Celine Dion CD, for God's sake. Um, but they don't really have a reference point. Right. You know, when you're in that Utah bubble, you don't have a reference point to it, so you don't know. You don't even know what gay is, other than something spooky that's so far removed from you, you can't really put a face or a name to it. So, I think they just thought I was sensitive <laughs> and talented. Uh, when I was in Aida, um, that was really kind of the crazy time, the two years that I was there. Um, that the Alegria is and all of that, all of that, all of that fun stuff. I actually kept a, a, a diary I would write in at work every night. Uh -huh. And it was my Summer of Sin Diary where I would actually <laughs> jot down my my skanky behavior. I see a musical in the world. Uh, my skanky, skanky <laughs> behavior. Well yeah, but you know what kids most kids get to get to make out and, and, and do things when they're young and but you get here and you're gay and everybody else just assumes you're gay and you wanna grab every winner you can find. Did you officially leave? Um, I've officially been um, not excommunicated. What's below that? Uh, I was officially I was disfellowshipped. I was disfellowshipped um, during the time that I went into the second meeting with the bishop, and um, and had to deal with with telling him that I was still going to be gay. So I was disfellowshipped, and um, <laughs> I mean, I guess they would probably excommunicate me if they if they if I mean. Although the missionaries have been in the last couple of years have been to my apartment a couple of times. My roommate thought one of them had a sword. A sword? Yeah, that's what she said. She was like, the Mormons were here, and I think one of them had a sword. <laughs> the sword of Laban? I think there's a lot of really beautiful things in the church. I think the community aspect of it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, you know, even recently with the whole Hurricane Sandy thing, there was a news story on New York One about oh, yeah. all those thousands of Mormons who, so. who came to Staten Island. I don't feel particularly connected to it. Um, but I think anything that brings people solace is worthwhile. 
Now I'm a freelance showbiz person. Um, I host three shows a week. I do Monday nights at XL, my house night there. I do Broadway sessions, which we've been doing for four years, which was that a hooter or what? That the other night. Fun. So fun, right? Yeah. Um, and then I host um, a Friday night show at the Duplex. So I do all that, and then I and then I teach. I teach still, I run around, and I and I judge talent competitions. I was on Dance Moms. Are you one of those who are like, oh, I want to be married, I want to have kids, <sighs> or no? I, uh, my uterus is screaming. I I I would love to have a child. I would love to have a child. I would kill a child <laughs> right now, not on purpose. But I would leave the child somewhere. Or I would drop a, a vodka gimlet on its head or something, and it would. For a very long time, I didn't actually even like going back to Utah. For for a long time, I, going home made me very anxious. Getting off the plane in Salt Lake City made me made me cringe. Um, it's better now because it's all about the family and the nieces and the nephews. Okay. And I know I I've heard from my sisters. My brother has said this on occasion that that he how sad he is that I won't be with the family in in the afterlife in, in the celestial kingdom because I made this choice. And you're like, does that make any sense at all? It makes no sense. There's no logic in it at all. There's no logic to be found in it. And, but that's the thing, when you get a lot of other <coughs> people together, especially in a religious setting, you can't, like, there's no logic, because they just, they, they circle the wagons and- They're and like, I can tick off faith. these boxes, I'll tick off these boxes, I'm going to heaven, Mm -hmm. <laughs> you may be a much better person than I am. That's you may so be dangerous. whatever, but you're going to hell and I'm going to heaven because I ticked off this box, this box, and this box. It's just bizarre. It's, it's completely that, outrageous. I'm like, what kind of God do you worship that is that has that kind of logic? But that's, but that's where I get a little bit into the doctrinal stuff and I think men fuck it up. I think people fuck it up. Are you spiritual? Do you believe in a God? I what love the you? whole idea of I love the eternal progression idea that's that's in the Mormon church. That things um, go on after we die. Absolutely. Well and, and that there is that there is growth and, and things to you know things to accomplish and build and learn and become and I think Do you have a that, relationship with God? I feel like I do, yeah. Absolutely. And I and my mother uh, taught me this, but I the thing I think about in, in, in dealing with people every day is is being kind. I think kindness is so important. I think that if you're kind to people, what else is there? You know, I think that, I think that's a religion unto itself. I think that that's what we're here to do, is to help and support and love each other. 